cool that was a dramatic intro hey guys welcome to the video my name is dean i'm a pro digital artist from the uk and you're tuned into photomanipulation.com on this channel we will take you beyond the photoshop basics and into the world of advanced digital art so it's a bit of a crazy one today guys i decided to build a mech lion from motorcycle sports bike parts in photoshop now i can't take credit for this idea years and years ago there was an artist called cat meth on DeviantArt who did something similar creating cyborg humanoids but I always like to give a shout out for my inspiration in the videos that I do. Now what's not typical for my workflow is this um, overpainting uh, drawing the lines using the Wacom Intuos. I'm, an, I'm new to using a tablet so this is me sketching out where the main panels and elements were going to go. Now those tubes coming out the head I wanted to copy one of the other source images and incorporate those side tubes on the main. Now this bit here, there's no real way to sugarcoat it. It's basically cutting out the parts that you need from the motorbike or sports bikes and then putting them all down on the actual document itself. Now I'm not going to time lapse every single element that I cut out with a pen tool because you'd be here forever. but there's a lot of elapsed time. I'm just showing you your choice parts of the actual process itself. So I use the pen tool to cut out these elements and then paste them into the same document where I'm building up the line. Now, usually I'm really good with naming layers, layer groups, and having good housekeeping in the Photoshop layer stack. But for this one, I just wanted to throw down the elements and work fast. So, there was no rhyme or reason to where things were positioned or placed and what you're seeing on the screen right now is literally the process of cutting out small elements from each bike and then pasting them into the main document that we're working in now i had to actually increase the size of the canvas like three times to accommodate all of the elements and it's not the case that i cut out the elements at the beginning and then that was it I cut out a big bulk of elements and then started working on the lion and then realized I needed more and then went ahead and cut out more bits on the bikes. Overall, uh, there were 12 bikes. There were 50 chopped out elements from the bikes themselves. So one bike could provide, you know, up to five separate elements. You can see that on screen now. And then the overall composition was about uh, 203 layers which is quite big by any stretch now this section here you can see the elements being incorporated and kind of moved over the lion you can see there the opacity was reduced to get it in position and then with the pen tool sometimes i use the layer mask sometimes i didn't sometimes i just deleted the pixel data so Again, it's not best practices working non-destructively. With pieces like this, sometimes you have to go wild and just go for it. And I was a bit inspired by um, Phase Runner recently watching and reacting to his videos. Now that construct layer, I, I put in a blank layer with the word construct written in caps. Everything underneath the construct layer is literally the elements everything above the construct layer on the layer stack is the elements being put into position and incorporated to create the the overall line composite i'm going to be honest i didn't really know what i was doing going into this and i was kind of winging it hard i used to do stuff like this all the time when i was really young um, create spiders and robots out of lawnmower parts so it's been a while since i've done anything like this from time to time, you'll see me cycle through and hide and show those rough guidelines that I did with the Wacom. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that I'm not too hot with the warp or trans transform functions. Since then, I've been watching lots of videos by other people, Benny Productions, Phase Runner. I'm gonna be doing one on Nemanja Sekulik soon. And each time I do a React video for those artists, I learn a little something. And some of the things that I've been learning from those guys, I've implemented with this lion piece. 
one cool thing that I got from the comments on a previous video was to use the alt key when doing the warp um, so warping an element earlier on you would have seen me warping a bit to conform to the lion snout I actually held down alt and then moved the kind of anchor points of the warp tool and it seemed to work really really well I could literally sculpt the element onto the lion to conform to the shape of the guidelines and um, yeah I've never had that much success before so I was feeling really really good about working with the warp tool and you can see that there in that cheek plate now to activate the warp tool I went command and T that's control if you're on Windows and then right clicked on the transform and selected warp and then holding down alt I clicked and dragged and sculpted the element so it fit exactly what I wanted it to do so it was using the guidelines it was hiding and showing the original lion and pulling it all together now I've slowed down a bit on this one because I wanted to show how some of these elements can intersect not rocket science nothing too fancy we've got the layer there reduce the opacity just see the position and then using the pen tool selectively chopping out the bits that I want to intersect so there's a layer mask on that layer and then the area that I want to remove with the pen tool create the path right click and then go fill with black now guys if you're not familiar with the pen tool I have done a full-blown dedicated tutorial for you to check out I'll put a link for that one in the description below so if you're not versed with a pen tool it's a really powerful bit of kit definitely get into using that as soon as possible with stuff like this you wouldn't be able to do this with magic wand or quick selection is just not possible now some of you guys watching this will think why is he using the pen tool to cut out when it's a, a pure white background and the reason why I do that is because me using the pen tool is a lot more clean and precise than using any quick selection tool the software AI is it will get there but today is not quite as good as my hands and my eye now this section here you can see one of the elements now a fast way to edit the elements is to just go into camera raw I use camera raw filter all the time for doing things on the fly quick edits and adjustments it could be um, you know the shadows the whites the um, the exposure I, I like to work in camera raw quite often now this shadow the, the shadow work that I'm doing I, is a trick that I stole from Benny productions after watching his videos and it's really simple it's an adjustment layer um, uh, exposure adjustment layer you pull the slider back to darken invert the layer mask to black so nothing is visible and then use a soft edged white brush to manually paint in the shadows that's a trick that I learned from Benny productions I was using levels before but I actually think exposure is better now the main composite of the line is done and now I'm messing about with some color processing here and I watched Abby Esparza's video on color processing with color lookups or LUTs that they're called never really messed around with this before but I really like the color and the finish of Abby's artwork and the same for Matt Seth Barnes the community manager for our team he does really good stuff with these LUTs so that's a bit of process in there darkening with levels I'm a big fan of levels because it's so simple and I understand it and then some final little tweaks here right with the mech lion complete I needed a background I didn't want anything too complex another trick that I stole from phase runner when he did his video I noticed that he used a lens blur and it gave a much nicer looking depth of field effect so we've got that background from Adobe stock links in the description for all these stocks by the way guys and for the line itself I'm a big fan of the iris blur uh, in the blur gallery where you can create that kind of drop-off effect 
where the front of the lion's face is in focus and then as the the kind of mane goes off in the distance the depth of field illusion is there really fast go to so yeah that's the mech lion piece pretty wild if you got value from this video guys a like and subscribe really helps us out but i'll tell you what's even better and that's watching another video so if you want to support us watch the next video in the end card it's going to be another complex weirdo crazy guy piece by me and that's a wrap for this one so thanks for tuning in i'll catch you at the next one see you then